to preserve our planet, scientists tell us that we need to bring the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere down from the current level of 394 parts per million, which is climbing currently. We need to bring that down to 350 parts per million. Therefore, 350 represents climate safety. Governments and organizations around the world have recognized that two degrees Celsius rise in temperatures is a threshold above which we cannot pass. It's not a goal, it's the limit at which we can tolerate a rise of temperature. We have to stay below that. Currently, our trajectory is going way above it. We need to change how we produce and consume energy. But what's the connection between climate change and Line 9? I'm sure many of you know there's an intimate connection and the two are closely linked. To keep below a two degrees rise in global temperatures from climate change, we can only emit 565 gigatons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Fossil fuel companies around the world right now have plans to emit five times that, over 2,500 gigatons of carbon dioxide. And we can't allow that to happen. The tar sands themselves, according to Jim Hansen, one of the world's most renowned climate scientists from NASA, estimates the tar sands contain about 240 gigatons of carbon dioxide if they were fully emitted and exploited. That's almost half of the total allowable energy, uh, carbon dioxide that we can emit. Now you might be asking, why can't we use the tar sands? It's local, it's Canadian, surely that makes it good. But that's not the case. Because for every barrel of oil that we get from the tar sands, it emits three to five times the amount of carbon than the conventional oil that we get elsewhere in the world. It is in inefficient and reduces the amount of energy that we can afford to get from oil and so reduces our chances of keeping below that two degrees centigrade, centigrade rise in temperature. Tar sands are the fastest growing source of emissions in Canada. Alberta alone is comparable to many other nations in their emissions. And so it represents a real and present danger to the well-being of our planet. The International Energy Agency, which I'll remind you, is not an environmental organization. It is an energy and an economic organization. But they predict that by the end of the century, on the current line trajectory that we're headed on, global temperatures will rise between 6 to 12 degrees. It could even reach 6 degrees in the next 40 years within everybody here's lifetime. Assuming we live that long, because human civilization cannot survive a six degree increase in temperatures. It's questionable whether our species can even survive a six degrees increase. Expanding the tar sands is the fast track to a vastly different world from which everybody here was born. It's a world without any coral, without vibrant coastal communities. And many of our cities around the world on the coast will disappear along with island nations like the Maldives. It's a world where there's no polar bears and sea turtles and thousands, if not millions of other species that would die and go extinct. It's a world in which Ontario summer temperatures would consistently above, be above 50 degrees centigrade. That's not a temperature I'm happy living in. Northern Gateway, along with the Keystone XL pipeline and this Enbridge's Line 9, are the artilleries for the tar sands. They are, trans they are there currently transporting or, uh, uh, conventional oil, but they are trying to reverse it to, uh, to transport diluted bitumen or dilbit, which is a toxic substance, uh, in incredibly corrosive and likely to spill. The, the tar sands are facilitated by these pipelines, and these pipelines allow our addiction and dependency on oil to continue. The climate cannot afford Line 9. Not only that, not only the climate is threatened, but Line 9 directly threatens farmlands in Ontario. 
rivers and water, including the city of Toronto's water, comes from areas that would be affected by Line 9 if there was a spill. The tar sands themselves are destroying delicate ecosystems and forests, causing desertification on a scale not of just a little bit, but the size of countries, European countries like Greece, would be consumed and the size of the tar sands. Stopping the tar sands is done by stopping the pipes. Banning the transportation of Dilbit through Toronto is an important step. And if we don't, then over are about 100 municipalities, 18 First Nation communities, and over 9 million people that live within 50 kilometers of the, of the Line 9 pipe would be threatened. And the Enbridge itself doesn't have a good safety record. This isn't a case of whether there will be a spill. This is a case of when. The company itself admits to over 100 oil pipeline spills per year. We are here today to let our city councillors know that we need a new energy paradigm. Today we stand here in Toronto, downtown and the action earlier today at City Hall, along with actions all over Ontario and the northeastern United States to on 350's International Tar Sands Action Day to let our elected officials know that we need to move away from fossil fuels and to a sustainable energy future. When it comes to climate change, we're out of time. We need to abandon fossil fuels and seize the opportunity now to move to a new energy future. We need to put our planetary health as our top priority. Join me now. No line nine. 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 Uh, okay, we're going to take a short walk along the line. We're going to walk the line uh, down one block east um, where the Raging Grannies are going to entertain us once more in Sabrina, with Sabrina, um, on a new composition for these, this event. The banner will lead us off and head across this intersection down and then along. <laughs> 